Carthage must be destroyed. Here are my foot knights and one lone infantryman from the uh, from old paint jobs I did. I had some uh, infantrymen done a while ago, but yeah, here on Carthage must be destroyed. I am just showing you guys another painting vlog and sharing with you my six latest additions to my Agincourt up to the uh, Siege of uh, New Orleans project. Uh, I'll just call it the uh, late Hundred Years War project, right? <laughs> so I showed you guys in the last video on this that I did up six new knights. They are all in the front here. So from left to right in their finished forms, fully varnished and based. Here I have a Diabret. I, I, if I pronounce these names wrong, I'm sorry. French is not my uh, <laughs> not my native tongue. But I got Diabret here. He's uh, got a, he's a, one of the commanders in Agincourt. Dies. His son takes up the sword later. He's got the heraldry there. Here I have what I'm calling a generic knight, but I'm going to call him Gilles de Rey, which is another famous Joan of Arc uh, companion. The reason he could be uh, Gilles de Rey, I think, and again, sorry if I'm butchering these names, is because I've just given him the simple black cross on a yellow tunic. And I had a lot of fun doing the spiral here on the, uh, the cutoff lance. Try to add some color and some excitement. Same with this guy's axe here. This is Jean de Buel. I don't know how to pronounce it again. Um, another character that comes in the later part of the Hundred Years' War. Uh, he fights with Joan of Arc in New Orleans. I don't remember if the history's right or if it's based off of something. He writes a book. In any case, I really like doing his heraldry. A lot of people like this one. Um, I want to say here that I applied this... Uh, AK Ultra Matte Varnish on the tunic there. I'm at a loss of words. A tabard, tunic, whatever it is, is clothing there. But I didn't on the uh, metals there. And I've mentioned that before in my videos. But I just like how matte the ultraviolet is. See, there's no real shine. There's a bit of shine, but this is from paint. But, like, the shine on the armor is noticeable in the light. But this guy really exemplifies how matte the stuff gets. And there's two coat, coats of a... Uh, Vallejo matte under it, which is actually not truly matte if it's the paint-on version. Here's the Oxy, which is a guy that apparently died at Agincourt. I don't know who he is, what he is, but it's in the Perry booklet for painting. This one was really fun to paint. Um, is this checkers and lines through there just on his get up there. This is a Scotman here, Scotman, Scotsman here. A Scottish knight. He is one of the Stuarts from the... Uh, Stuart family. This one's Stuart. I think it's John Stuart of Darnley. What it what is? He's a very complicated, uh, complicated, complex coat of arms. I left the shoulders here. The shoulders are actually not from the knight sprue, but rather they're from the infantry sprue. You can see that his uh, he doesn't have very uh, metal-looking gauntlets on because he actually has leather gloves on. That's from the uh, regular infantry sprue. So I give him that axe just to be different. And then I kept the Stuart standard family kind of banner which is just checkers on white there but then he also gets awarded I think I don't remember what he becomes uh, a lord of but in France he's granted some sort of land so his 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 device is supposed to be the fleur-de-lis on a blue kind of standard then it's got a red uh, a border and those yellow dots on the red border are supposed to be buckles but at that scale I can't do the buckles and then he has the uh, red stripe through the family uh, through the family heraldry the one that you normally uh, associate with Stuarts and yeah he's got that on the back there as well I might as well show you the plumes on these foot guys here and I did this with the uh, the, uh, Brit the guy from Brittany there Rich uh, Arthur Richmond I think his name Arthur Richmond <laughs> I'm sorry it's a little late I can't remember the names but yeah I did it. it's a little more clear on the back there I think with this coat of arms that was a fun one to do at this scale but Anyway, yeah, I gave a couple guys these plumes from the, uh, they're actually from the horse kit. And I thought instead of giving all horsemen some of them, I should give some of the infantry some of those plumes. And then finally, here's a generic, just a generic guy. He's got some green on. Um, his visor looks ridiculously big, and it is, because it's actually one of the visors from these cavalrymen. The cavalrymen are sl slightly larger in scale to the infantry. Now, I think the infantrymen were done up in 2012. If anyone knows, they can correct me. But these guys were done up closer to 2020. So the scale and the sculpt's a little different. They still fit in well, but the cavalrymen are a bit bigger. And I think the size of his visor on his helmet is a little oversized, but otherwise he still <laughs> looks pretty cool. 
And then of course, these are the nights I shared with you guys last time. This time, as you can see, I did a lot more heraldry and less generic. Last time I was kind of testing colors and I'll just show you guys here. I did more kind of generic, I'll call them no-name knights. They're just, you know, I did the one, uh, the guy from Brittany there. And uh, again, this is another Scotsman based on his shield. But these guys here, I did more generic looking lads. The same with the horsemen, which I shared in another video. And yeah, next time I do horsemen, and I just happen to have the cavalry here, I'm gonna be doing a lot more heraldry on these guys because I think I need a little more herald heraldry. I only did, how many did I do here? I only did the one guy with true heraldry here, the damn voice, if that's how you pronounce his name. But the rest of them are just kind of generic men at arms. The guy hanging out in the back there. Call him as retinue or something. With this, with these guys here, I'll talk about the heavy guys up front here. These are more knights. I want to incorporate this one here. This is uh, Louis, the Count of Vendôme here. Now, maybe he, I think he's in, he's recorded to be in one battle in the late Hundred Years' War where he doesn't win. <laughs> Um, but he just has such a cool looking banner that I wanted to include him and I don't know how I'm gonna get it on his surcoat, but I do plan to paint it on I'll show you here this guy's surcoat that uh, Quarter thing with the fleur-de-lis and the uh, lions there the Vendôme mixed with the uh, Family stuff the royal stuff there. It's gonna be difficult to get on him, but he's gonna be kind of another commander in the army I've also got two standards in there because I also have of course, Richmond's here, right? Or the Richmond's, uh, actually, he's Arthur. He's the Count of Richmond, right? I'm going to have this on a flag or infantryman. GMB, by the way, does excellent, excellent flags. In, in my opinion, despite their price, they are the better flags for wargaming because the, the material printed on and the quality of the print is always good. Um, way better than me just printing off my own printer. I will also be putting on the... Uh, Saint Martin. This is a generic flag for the infantrymen. I do have in the back here, and I'll show you guys. I started building up some basic sergeants. I went and bought some extra horses for the uh, extra six guys that you can make in the Perry box set. You can have, you can make twelve cavalrymen, but they only give you twelve horses. They they actually give you eighteen bodies in that kit. Sorry if I'm stuttering words. It's, uh, it's late here. I <laughs> just want to share my project before I went to bed. So. But yeah, I started them up. There's going to be three more of them, and they'll have a standard, probably with St. Martin's, or alternatively, I'll just add this. Uh, I just got, what is it? This is Charles Seven standard, but just for generic-looking French standards, it works as well. Um, somebody has a... I don't know what that what those words mean. But yeah, check out GMB Designs if you like flags and want some for 100 Years of War. They're really good quality. Um, I might also incorporate this old Bretonian banner. Again, just generic flitterly. I don't know where or how I'm going to put it on my guys. But, but yeah, I just wanted to share with you all my latest project work. Um, what I plan to do from here, because I basically have all the heavy footmen done. As you can see in the back there, I'm doing another unit. And I'm going by Lion Rampant sizes here. Lion Rampant uses... Uh, well, the current version of Lion Rampant, there's a 2.0 coming out, but the current version basically gives you, for men-at-arms and mounted soldiers, you get six per unit. So this is supposed to represent two units in Lion Rampant. And this guy will probably be added to one later, this lone policeman. And then these guys here are a unit, and then I'll have another unit of heavy knights. And that's kind of the heavy core. Then I'll have some sergeants which are different from the uh mounted man at arms i guess the proper term is that these guys are foot men at arms and then these guys are mounted men at arms i just call them knights because they're kind of the they got the best gear and then the level just the level below them equally as uh scary to looking at the game stats at times uh, would be these uh, mounted sergeants um beyond that i do want to make regular infantry and then Lion Ramp and the other infantry all sit at about, I think it's 12 men per unit. It may be in 2.02, 2, I don't know yet. But the idea is that I want to do uh, 12 police men. So they'll just be like uh, lads carrying these bigger shields to protect the crossbowmen. And then I'll also do 12 crossbowmen. And then I'll do 12 mixed arm infantry that will look more like the regular guys, but they'll have more like, you know, axes and and two-handed spears and, and hammers and stuff. 
kind of like a mixed force, not just spearmen. Other than that, I don't think I'm going to take, see, the, the project is basically right now almost half done. Once I get, actually, once I get these knights done, I can play a really hard hitting, heavily armored game of 24 points of Lion Rampant. Um, but I do want to add more forces for that variation. And, you know, maybe if we play a bigger game, I want more forces in there. The last thing I want to share is I have been considering doing some scenery, but I might hold off on it. This is a tabletop workshops, click together scenery. It's been glued together here. Now they advertise at 25 millimeter, 28 millimeter, I should say, but even on the base here, even if it's off the base here, that door, like, it's a dwarf store. <laughs> and I'm pretty picky. Like, he's pretty big against that building. You know, when you're wargaming, it might not be a big deal to see something that size. But I I'm particularly picky on sizing. So I actually might, I will, I'm not actually, might, I'm, I'm selling this piece on eBay. And uh, I want to use something else. But for terrain, I don't plan to use this particular line. I think it's a little too small. I think it's better for 25 mil. I think that's when it was made, maybe, back in the day when 25 mil for historics were the norm. I'll probably look for something bigger, and maybe just not even do a land. Like, you know, I got, I got a buddy who does a whole bunch of medieval stuff. I might not even do terrain. I might just do the figures and be done with it, and then use whoever else has stuff for terrain. But yeah, I just find the tabletop workshop stuff a little too small for my liking. Um, there is a barn that I have makes it look small when I, I won't pull it out but these horses in the barn look ridiculously huge like the barn could never hold even one of these horses but it might work well just for like a storage place because it's again it's got this thatch roof on it and they're supposed to have two barn doors but next to infantry they look convincing enough that it could be like a, a footman's door or something right so i think for that one i'll keep it and i'll just use it as a storage building but not advertise it as a barn so Anyway, I just wanted to share my vlog. Again, uh, sorry, I'm a little tired here. Uh, I've been painting lots and getting next projects ready. The next decal project is coming out soon. And I won't get into more details right now. We are in the works on it. I'll share that when it gets closer to it. But I'll be painting some more guys for that, painting more shields. And you'll get more decals to go along with things like this Rowan sheep here as I try to focus in. But yeah, more information coming out about that soon. So that's the collection where it's at. Um, next time I film, maybe I'll be a little more lively. <laughs> it's not so late. So thank you guys all for watching. I will share more and update more when I can. So thank you and have a good one.